Hi, everyone. I'm Rhonda with Sawgrass, and we are here for our Wednesday uh, Learn with Sawgrass workshop, and we're going to delve a little bit more into social selling. So I realized when I wrote the schedule uh, that we basically have two classes on the same topic back to back. So last week, it was very um, kind of um, big picture. We talked about um, using social media and social selling, and we talked about some strategies for getting engagement. Uh, today, we're going to dive a lot more into our platform and kind of show you that. So one moment. All right, so one second. I am going to give you a bit of a sneak peek. So hopefully I can get this set up so I can give you a bit of a sneak peek real quick. Get all my windows arranged really fast. That work. All right. So I am going to uh, let you in on a little bit of a secret. I don't even think Kesley knows this particular secret. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, hopefully, if everything stays as it currently is, we're going to launch some new names for our platform. Um, so we're going to kind of walk away from design mate and print mate um, and market mate. And we're going to enter kind of a new world with that. And it's all going to fall under this platform of my sawgrass. So I'm going to let you see what that looks like real fast and what it's going to look like tomorrow when you sign in. Uh, hopefully I won't show anything I'm not supposed to, uh, but I'm going to show you that real fast before we jump in too far. All right. So let me manage all my windows. I'm just going to log in. So nothing changes here. You're going to log in just like you have before. We are still making some changes. Uh, but this will kind of give you an idea of what this is going to look like tomorrow for you. So when you come in tomorrow, um, you are going to see this and you're going to see that there are some spots where you can go and do specific things. Now, why are we making this change again? We just wanted to simplify things for you. And we wanted to make sure that you saw kind of the actions that you're taking and what you're doing, because uh, we thought it'd be a little bit easier for you. So you can complete your profile, uh, you can download your print utility, and then create my first product is just going to take you right into the designing tool. And then um, post a product for sale is going to take you right into your selling platform. So you're going to see that each thing has its own little icon now. You can still do community, you can still go into your store, uh, you can still print and you can still design, um, but we now have those icons and we're just going to call them what they are. Um, and then you are going to see that your Design Mate Plus is now your My Sawgrass Plus account. And then under your resources, everything that you're used to finding, information on our workshops, information on the Academy and our blog, and then that inspiration page that you're used to, you can click on that and that's going to take you right there as well. And um, so this is kind of how that new page is going to look tomorrow. Uh, Y'all are going to be the only people who are a little bit prepared and um, aren't completely startled when they see the change. Uh, but we do have a new look for you tomorrow. Uh, but we're going to go in and, and look at the old stuff today. 
just to make life a little bit easier. But I did want to give you a little sneak peek for showing up today. All right. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I kind of went over the basics yesterday, but I wanted to give you a more advanced look today at how I feel you can best utilize that social selling through your store. Now, remember the store, the selling function is going to be in the U.S. only for now. So that's the first thing I like to remind you is that is in the U.S. only. Um, through the design tool, you're going to go right into your store. Um, so you're going to see that in just a minute. Uh, but basically, it's an extension. And that's where the other thing comes in that I want to remind you. There is no additional charge for you to have that digital storefront. So that online storefront that we're going to look at in just a minute you automatically get that as a um, as a Sawgrass user. So when you're using our Genuine Ink and our printers um, with our design tool, you are going to get that store as long as you're in the U.S. Uh, but the big thing to remember is it's not behind that Design Mate Plus or what we're going to call now our, uh, our My Sawgrass Plus. It's not behind that. Um, anyone can use this. So if I were designing a product, I'm going to launch Design Mate tomorrow. That's going to be hit design. Uh, but today I'm just going to click on my name and I'm going to go look at a few things first. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Market Mate, what we called it before. And I want to talk about our store. So we looked at this a little bit last week. Like we've said, every user um, does have this store that they can have. Uh, you are going to see that these images all have this uh, nice uh, lifestyle image behind it to make it easier for people to see how the product is going to look in real life and not just as a preview. Um, so all of that is going to exist. And if you were to share someone the link to your store, they are going to see all of the prices of everything that's for sale. Now, I will show you again how we're going to add an item for sale to the store, but I just want to go over a few things before we do that. Um, you're probably thinking, Rhonda, how do I share my store with someone? I'm just going to hit the share button. And when we hear that, hit that share button, you can get the link or you could get a link directly into Facebook, X, or Pinterest as well. And so it's all right there for you to use. All right. Now, a few things about your store. You want to create a store that's very um, appealing. You're going to notice that a couple of my products don't have a lifestyle image. We're going to talk about how we audit that and change that. But before we do, let's talk about your background photo and your profile picture. So I can hit edit and I can upload a new image uh, for this background. This one's mine. Uh, but anyone can go in and they can pick any image they have and use that uh, for that background. And then also you can change a profile picture. So I'm going to hit right here on my camera. And then I'm going to go into my folder. And I have my profile picture that is going to change. So it's going to change that photo for me. And then I have an image and it doesn't have to be of yourself. It can be a cartoon or whatever you want, but it's just another way that someone knows this store belongs to you. And if it's someone that you are, that is um, in your social media and they're seeing what you have, then they would love to see just another image of you to know they're on the right page and in the right spot. So let's talk a little bit. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to this gear we saw this a little bit ago on the new site where it said um, setting up your account. You could change the picture here. You can change your information here as well. Um, you can download Printmate from here as well. Um, and then in your account, this is where you're going to set up your payment information and your address. Now, why is that address going to be important? That's because this is how we know where you're located because you are both the store owner and you are the production house. So once that order is created, 
Um, it will be sent back to you. It's going to show up in your inbound orders. And you will be able to then click on it and select it. I have some orders I've had in the past. So you'd be able to go in and then process that order through. We give you the file to print. We give you the shipping label to print. And then you just tell us when it's dispatched so we can handle that payment part to get that back to you. All this will make a little more sense when I show you an order or show you a product as we create it. All right, so let's talk about um, the items that are in my store and what I can do with them once they're there. So the first thing I need to do is we're gonna walk through what you can do. So opening it in the designer is gonna open it back into the design tool so that I can make changes to the actual design. So if I realize uh, that I often misspell things, if I misspelled uh, contoured, I can go in and I can make a change there. But if I needed to like add that lifestyle image or adjust the price or maybe decide something about what people can or cannot change, then where I want to go is manage post details. So I'm going to manage post details. That's going to take me back into my product. I could update my uh, description. I could update my product name. I already chose that lifestyle image. So I'm just going to hit feature and now it has that one. And that's going to be the first image that people see when they look at it. Now, um, I mark that this is customizable because the heart of all sublimation is the fact that people can make changes. So I'm going to go into this lock layers. And this is where I can adjust what they can or cannot change. Now, I may say that for the most part, the only thing someone is changing is that name. So the name part, which is Cheryl, I could lock everything else. Now this is double-sided. It's got the same design on the front and the back. That's why you see everything twice. But I may do something where I may lock um, the font or I may lock the text, but I could let them change the color. Um, so I could go in and I could lock or, or decide what they can or cannot change on something like this. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'd probably lock everything except for that name. And that's the only thing that they can change on this particular product is that name. Because to me, that's probably the thing that's going to change the most. Now, like I said, we may leave this open to allow them to change colors uh, but I'm pretty happy with my designs. So that may be the only things that I let them change. I go back up to the top and hit done. And we'll look at just that in just a minute and how that looks for our customers. All right. So I have hit done. I'm going to go ahead and close this because that change is saved. Um, like we said, um, the thing with price is... Just to kind of look at it, you are both the seller and you are the producer. So you're getting both the seller share and you're getting the producer share. Now, I designed this, but to me, I didn't put a lot of, art, of effort into it. It's not something where it's my personal, personal photography or my personal artwork. If it were something that was very specific to me or something that I had put a lot of work into the artwork outside of just designing the product, I may go ahead and um, increase that price. Now you see that as I increase the price, the only part that's changing other than the sales price is the seller share. Um, so that really goes to you as the designer. Uh, you are noticing um, everyone asks, you know, what part of this does Sawgrass keep? Well, as you can see, the seller share and the producer share are going to go to you. Uh, so that means the leftover piece is what Sawgrass is taking for processing the order, figuring out the tax. Um, we're, we set those minimum prices. So we put a lot of back end work into this. And of course, just the storage and system maintenance as well. All goes into that. Now let's talk about this minimum price. So we did a few things here. So first of all, we looked at um, comparable products for sale in other places. 
where it is a personalized product like this. Um, we also looked at the cost of you having to prepare this to ship. So in this case, it's not that bad. You probably are just throwing this into a bubble envelope. Um, but for something like a mug where you have to have extra styrofoam or extra uh, bubble wrap, that's going to be one where it's going to be a little bit more for you. Um, so we wanted to make sure that that part of it is taken care of for you and that's in that producer share. And um, so all of that figures into that base price. Now you can increase the price. You can't decrease it. Uh, there is that wall, that minimum price that we've set. And we do, we have checked it to make sure that is pretty competitive. Now, if you feel that it's not competitive, you can always let us know. You can provide feedback or you can reach out to our care team and we'll be glad to take a look and see if we need to up upgrade that or update that. So I'm going to post for sale. This is going to take this back into my selling area and it'll put it right back into my store with those changes that I made. Uh, the big one being now we have that background image or that lifestyle image. Okay, so that is in my store. I do have a couple more that I need to go in and do that. So I'm going to manage those post details. I didn't add one for this particular one. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then I always forget to uh, feature that. So that was my problem there. So we'll hit post for sale. Now, one of the things that you should always be doing is looking at your store. So how does my store look? How does that storefront look? So if someone just has the link through either your link tree and in Instagram or through your bio and other social media to your store itself, always going in and checking that store and making sure that your products look really good. Now, you notice one of the things I immediately see this is on a wood background. This is on a wood background. So I may not want to do that. I may want to change one of those two or just make sure that whatever background I use for this particular one is very, very different. So that's another wood background. So I may want to look at my other looks and see if there's something that would work best. I think I could get away with this one. So we'll change that out so those look a little bit better sitting side by side. And I just have to remember to feature that. Okay. So as you can see, I've already started looking at some Christmas items uh, to add those to my store and start getting ready for that season. Let's say we are now past Christmas and we have moved on and it's now, say, uh, January. And so it's January and I may not need these items in my store anymore. It's going to be a little bit, uh, this one as well, it's going to be a little bit until it's October. So this may be something that I want to take out of my store. I'm going to go to the same spot. So I'm going to manage my post details. So I can go in and the way I remove this from my store is I just hit the save button. Um, so you may have realized this. There is a spot, your studio, where everything that you have designed that you're just selling locally is going to be. And then post for sale is where you're going to have those things that you want in your store for people to see. So I'm going to hit the save button. It's going to move it back for me. And now that is going to be currently under design, mate. It would be under design and that is there now. Um, so anyone is not going to see this. This is, as you can see, a little messy. It's all my individual products. Um, so I can have that however I want. No one's going to see it. They're only seeing your store. Um, and that's going to be this. So I can go in and I can do that at any point. Now, one thing that we've been asked a lot is what if I want to have a product moved? So let's say that you wanted to feature 
Maybe you're marrying bright t-shirt. It's Christmas time again. Maybe I want to add this to the front. Now, unfortunately, if I were just to go in and modify it, it's not going to move it to the front. It's going to keep it exactly where it is. So there's a little bit of a workaround that I want to show you today. And this is also good for a lot of your other projects. So the way I describe this is save and save as. So um, if you used our previous program, you know that it was always doing the save as functionality. So if I were to have my uh, dear Santa toddler shirt up and I saved it, and then tomorrow I pulled it up and made a change to it and saved it, you would have two of them in your files. Um, this program, our, our current design tool, does save over. So it does a true save every time it's just updating the existing product. There's another way to go about this so that you're not doing that. So we're going to launch our design tool, Design Me. Doesn't matter what product you choose. Well, actually it does. You're going to choose the product that you want to put this on. Um, so let's say that I am making a pillow today. I'm going to go in. And then I'm going to go to my gallery. So if I go down to designs, this is every project that I've created and saved. So that's why you save it the first time is you're saving it into a folder in your gallery. And then once that is saved, you can access again that again later. So I can go in and I can search for this. I know the name was Miriam Bright. I really should have kept this a t-shirt since I was uh, trying to show you how to save the product to a new spot. But you know what? We'll pretend it was a pillow both times. And let's see if this pulls up for me. If not, we can dig around a little bit. It is taking just a minute to go through everything. And we'll have to decide how much patience I have. And there goes my patience. So I'm actually going to change this to a t-shirt so it's exactly what it was before. So I'm going to go in and choose that t-shirt. And then I'm going to go in and find that design. So I'm going to go to my galleries, go down to designs. And I'm assuming it's going to be under here. Let's see. Yeah. Well, we will do this one because this is also in my store. I saw it. So I can go in, I can alter this, um, make sure the design fits the way I want it to on the product. And then now when I go to save and print, it's as if I'm creating a new one. So this was actually a mouse pad. I'm going to say girl t-shirt. I'm going to go ahead and do my shirt. Put that back into my apparel. And then I'm saving this as new. So this is a completely new design. I could have moved them down and kind of played with it a little bit. Uh, but I'm recreating my design in a new spot. And it's going to save that. Bring that up to my preview. I'm going to add a description. Uh, All right, so I got my shirt. I can create my look. I'm going to remember what I just said to myself about making sure this looks a little different. Um, why not? When I 
put the address in up here. The computer is telling me it's 110 Clearwater, and this um, packing list says 410 Clearwater. Okay. Let's jump back in and look at that. So I've got my shirt all ready to go again. I can decide how customizable this is. I can go through all of that. I'm going to remember to feature this design. And then I'm going to post it for sale. Now, this is very similar to a product that I had had in previously. But now the really cool thing is, once that's in my store, that's going to take over position number one. And I can go down and delete the one that I, or the mouse pad that I had previously. Didn't realize it was a mouse pad, uh, but I could have done that as a mouse pad and then just deleted my old one. And now that moves it up in my store. Now, remember what we do with this one. I would just again, click on this and I would manage my post details and hit a save instead of a post. And I can move that. So that's one way you can go in and clean up your store make that the way you want it to be um, and not delete those products. Now you can delete them too, uh, but by just moving them over to your store, that means that next Christmas I can add my Christmas items back in or whatever that may be. Um, or I can take them out at the end of the Christmas season and then I have them ready to go again next year. Now I do want to show you what this particular one looks like. Now, if I were to have view details, this is going to take me to basically what the customer is going to see when they pull up that product. Now, I am going to go to my share links. I showed you these last week. Um, you can share immediately to Facebook, X, and Pinterest. You can also get an email or you can get a link to put in an email. Um, and then here are the very specific links. The top one brings you here. Add to cart is going to put it into the cart. So some of those products that aren't personalizable, that's probably where I'd want those to go. And then this open in designer, not my favorite, but it opens up in the design tool. Now I'm going to copy this link because I want to show you what this looks like as a customer. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up an incognito window so you can see this. So anyone who has that link and clicks on it or paste it, paste it into a browser is going to get this. So they're going to see that product. If you haven't filled out my survey yet on how you connect to the printer, please do. That's going to be up for about a week. And then they have a choice. They can add this to the to their cart as it is. I doubt they're going to want to unless they know a Cheryl or they can hit customize. Now, when they hit customize, it's going to take them into a very different looking storefront or design tool. And so I want to make sure you see what that looks like. So that's going to load for us. All right. So here is that product. And then on the left side, you're going to see what they can and cannot change, what they can alter. Now, remember, I limited this quite a bit and I'm not sure why that put that. Oh, there it is. Um, you see that where they can go in and they can change this. They can hit edit. And then they can just change the name. Now, I didn't give them any limits here, uh, so they could change the name. They also could change the font if they chose. Um, but all they can change is that name part because I locked down everything else. So as the creator, this gives you a lot of freedom to make sure that or a lot of control 
to make sure that people are only changing the things that you want them to change. And they're not making too much of a difference to your product. So that's what they could do. And then they could add that to the cart and buy it. And then you get that order as the producer. All right, so we've talked about a lot. Um, you've seen how you are setting up this product. You've seen how you can access that. Um, so we've gone through a lot with this. And I did want to cover just a couple other things about social selling. All right, so as always, these videos are going to go into the academy. Um, so you can always go to our academy and pull up any of these classes once they are done. We do load them there. Um, last week I did load the power or the Canva presentation as well as a PDF. So you could see that. Um, and we're just going to talk a little bit more about social selling. So I hope you have a great day and the one who said they just had to go. Um, but please, if you have any questions, start putting those in that Q&A session section. I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, but I did want to go over a couple of things from last week that I didn't talk about in a lot of detail. And um, so one of the things we were talking about was gaining interaction in your social media. So how do you get people to interact with you? How do you gain traction? How do you gain new followers? Followers. Yes, so if you do receive an order, you do get an email. It says you have a new order. Um, and you can click on that to access it. So if you're getting a new order, you will see that uh, message that you can go in and start that process. And it takes you to that inbound order where you accept it and just move it through the steps there. All right. So one of the things we were talking about last week is how do you gain followers? How do you Linda gain here. interactions? Yeah. All right, Ellen, I'm not sure if you had a question, so I apologize. Yeah, so how will returns be handled? That's a really good question. And so that goes to our care team. So if there's an issue, it will come through the care team here at Sawgrass. That's another piece of what we handle for you. Um, and because we are doing that, we will then reach out if there's something that needs to be handled. Generally, we are going to make um, any of the reprints that have to happen. You should see my storeroom. Uh, we have quite a few products to use for that purpose. Yeah, so someone said they're having an issue with the sizes. We do know there has been a problem with that. We are hoping to get an update out to you as soon as possible to fix that bug. Um, if you reach out to our care team, they do have some workarounds to help you with that. We do know that issue is out there, um, and we are looking at that. Um, is there a lifestyle image for every item in the catalog? Yes and no. Um, some of them are mostly going to be a colored background, um, but we are we are constantly adding those. You should be seeing some backgrounds soon for the holiday season as well. All right. So let's talk a little bit about gaining engagement. So one of the big things here is always making sure that you have contact that content that people can interact with. Um, so asking questions, even if it's off topic, is a good way to bring people in. Um, another way of doing that is going to be polls, asking them what they prefer, what they like, what they'd like to see. And then the good thing here is as a store owner, following up with those links. So linking to products that kind of match that category. Uh, what would you like to see this week? Because I would think, um, you know, you may be dropping a few at a time, but a lot of the times you probably are dropping one or two products per week and then having that constant link out to your store. Now, one of the things we talked about last week is kind of bringing it all together. So you may sell in person at a market and then have this social selling platform as well, which is really, really great because uh, it's another way of just bringing in that extra uh, 
that extra income. Uh, but one of the things that you can do if you have a physical booth is having sign up so that people can go on, go in and sign up so that, you know, they're giving you their email addresses. This is a good way to start those email campaigns. Um, check out our new holiday lineup. Hey, the store has been refreshed. Just take a peek at this. So all of those are things that you can do um, and you can kind of help get people in. So um, that is kind of the end of my material for the day. I gave you a sneak preview. I answered some more questions and so showed you some other ways that you can use your store. What questions do you have before we go? And while I'm doing that, I am going to put a poll up. Um, this is a poll that I've been running for a few weeks, not making any promises, uh, but it is about the possibility of a mobile app and what you'd like to see in that mobile app. Um, so please feel free to fill that in. Yeah, so uh, can you do that as a QR code or as a text message? Text message is easy. You're just going to copy that code and be able to use that there. Uh, you would be able to put that code in anywhere where you can generate a QR code and do it that way. So a link to your store through that QR code would be an excellent thing to do with business cards if you're also selling in a market. And then uh, Kesley is going to be talking in the next few weeks about setting up for both holiday markets and then setting up content for your online store as well. All right. So anyone who wants to fill out the survey, please feel around it. Please feel free to stick around and do that. Um, otherwise, that's all I got for today. Feel free to ask any questions as well. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Kesley, what's on the docket for next week? Hey, okay. so yeah, no, this is great. Um, next week, we're going to work on um, earrings, actually, to be specific. We're going to work on earrings um, because I think that that will give us a, a great opportunity to talk about different ways that you can um, integrate your product, whether it's earrings or coasters or mugs, whatever you're making, how to integrate that and talk about that item on your social channel. Like usually we do a, a variety of items, but this time I'm just going to stick to one item and we'll talk about um, how you can use that and integrate it with your socials. So I think we'll talk about like how to take pictures of items. Um, I have, we're going to talk about actually making, we'll do the, the earrings and the hardware and then how to make those unique for your community. That's awesome. And that's such yeah. a big thing. Like you saw my store, I had a little bit of everything. Um, if I were actually selling, I'd probably mostly focus on say drinkware um, or something like that. So earrings, maybe it, or coasters or whatever it is, but it's really good for your audience. If you have one thing that you do and you do very, very well. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Like I said, if you're still filling out that survey, uh, feel free to stick around and otherwise y'all have a good week. And if you're in the path of Debbie, um, we finally, I think are finally wrapping down, uh, but uh, everyone stay dry and everyone stay safe. Bye-bye.